Course in Miracles, Lesson 22, January 26, 2021. What I see is a form of vengeance. Today's idea accurately describes the way anyone who holds attack thoughts in his mind must see the world. So I call it fight mind. Having projected his anger onto the world, he sees vengeance about to strike at him. His own attack is thus perceived as self-defense. This becomes an increasingly vicious circle until he is willing to change how he sees. Otherwise, thoughts of attack and counterattack will preoccupy him and people his entire world. What peace of mind is possible to him then? It is from the savage fantasy that you want to escape. Is it not joyous news to hear that it is not real? Is it not a happy discovery to find that you can escape? You made what you would destroy, everything that you hate and would attack and kill. All that you fear does not exist. Look at the world about you at least five times today for at least a minute each time. As your eyes move slowly from one object to another, from one body to another, say to yourself, I see only the perishable. I see nothing that will last. What I see is not real. What I see is a form of vengeance. At the end of each practice period, ask yourself, is this the world I really want to see? The answer is surely obvious. So I really love this one. Um, I'm going to read it again the way I would want to read it, where I don't identify with my own ego mind. So I'm going to read that differently. But that's how the book, it, that's how it is in the book. Um, so it's, it's easy to, it's easy to see your own fight mind when it's very strong, but if it's tiny, then you accept it. That's why a lot of people, if they only hate one person, that's fine because they're only hating one person, but that's, that's where your work is. And if you hate one person, then you're going to hate their supporters, you know, so that's not just one person. That's, you may hate the strongest one person, but you're going to still have a fight mind for the people that support that person. Um, or what they call attack thoughts. Um, and, you know, that you just see, um, you see your own attack thoughts just as um, vengeance. I'm just sticking up for myself. Um, you know, thoughts of, Attack and counterattack. Um, so it's it's when you start looking at it like even the smallest amount, and you take responsibility for your fight mind. Um, you know, I have it. I definitely have it. We, you know, our ego writes scripts for other people in our heads. I don't. I don't want to be treated the way some people treat me. And, um, and, and they don't, clearly they don't want me to think the way I think. So silence is always the best response to nonsense. Anyway, now I'm going to read this same thing, except instead of saying I and identifying as my ego mind, I'm going to, um, read it as far as uh, the eye is the ego mind. Okay. So what, what I see as a form of vengeance becomes what my ego sees is a form of vengeance. Today's idea accurately describes the way anyone who holds attack thoughts in their mind must see the world. Having pro my ego having projected anger onto the world sees vengeance about to strike at me keeps me safe sane and secure so my ego's own attack is just perceived as self-defense this becomes an increasingly vicious circle until i capital i am willing to identify as my big i spirit directed self and treat my little i ego mind stories as stories that I'm not attached to. 
Otherwise, thoughts of attack and counterattack will preoccupy my mind and my world. There's no peace of mind possible then. This uh, is a savage fantasy that my big eye spirit mind wants to escape, desires to escape, would raise my vibration to escape, but my little eye ego mind wants to stay in the fight so that it can win. Um, Dr. Phil says, uh, Dr. Phil, what did he, what did he say? Do you want to, something like, do you want to be right or do you want to be loved or something like that? I don't remember. I'll have to see what, if anybody remembers, Dr. Phil said something about you can be this or you can be right. You can have, enjoy your life or you can be right or you can have fun or you could be right. Anyway, if you think, if anybody remembers, just go ahead and throw it in the comments. Um, so it is joyous news to hear that the reality that my ego has made is not real. It's a happy discovery to find that I can escape that reality. My own ego mind made what my big I spirit mind can destroy. Everything that my ego hates and would attack and kill, all that my ego fears does not exist. So looking uh, about me at least five times today, at least a minute each time, as my eyes move slowly from one object to another, from one body to another, and we keep this one the same because we, unless we're, unless we're constantly practicing bless, forgive, respect, real choice, and love, and constantly being impeccable with the word to the point where we know if we're coming from little I ego mind or big I spirit mind, we naturally um, identify with the little I egoic mind. Because, and it's keeping us safe, sane, and secure. All right. So I see only the perishable. I see nothing that will last. What I see is not real. What I see is a form of vengeance. And then at the end of each practice period, ask myself, is this the world I really want to see? Um, Christian science, not Scientology, but the Mary Baker, Eddie, and... Um, um, when I was flying at United, I used to ask every single captain, what's your favorite book? What's your favorite movie? And one of them was The Art of Life or This Thing Called Life by Ernest Holmes. And so Mary Baker Eddy started Christian Science, but Ernest Holmes, you know, kind of did his own thing. His books are interesting to read, if you don't mind the word God. When I started reading Ernest Holmes, I didn't uh, like the word God because I was not a big fan of organized religion. So I changed the word God to... Uh, universe as I read so I could get the context I could get the meaning I could get all the good stuff out and now I like the word God it's just fine um, so I just changed the assigned meaning um, and now I'm a minister which is fine um, and then Christian science Mary Baker Eddy, it's, uh, there's no life, truth, intelligence, or substance in matter. All is infinite mind, and it's infinite manifestation. So matter is the unreal, and spirit is the real. So matter is unreal and temporal, doesn't last. So as I was doing this today, um, I see only the perishable. I see nothing that will last. What I see is not real. Um, I was looking at I, I could really feel my attachment to this picture that my teacher made and I have a wooden ohm on my wall that my husband bought for me and you know he doesn't really understand what I do <laughs> he just you know he's like oh whatever makes you happy honey you know so and I was looking at um, you know my room here that I've turned into a sanctuary for myself and my clients and well my kids too but they can't be crazy in here they can read in here 
So I'm looking around, you know, at all these things. I see only the perishable. I see nothing that will last. What I see is not real. And I really felt like, you know, a, oh, you know, like, oh, there it is. That's attachment. So I really liked today. I really liked this lesson today. I really felt like I was really feeling and getting in touch with my attachment. And that brings up one um, last thing. So I got, you know, the thing uh, in July, early July 2020. And, um, and I was suffering, you know, with it. And so in the suffering, I knew, I, I know I'm not this, right? I know I'm not this. And if I'm not this, but I'm suffering, then I know that I'm in identification mode with this, with the ego. Um, I prayed, uh, I prayed to, if it was in my highest best to get it, to get it. So I, so I did get it. So I, I walked it. I knew, I knew that I was probably going to get it, but I kept, I felt like I kept my father safe because he's in his seventies and I really didn't want to worry, keep worrying about, you know, affecting him with that. So anyway, by feeling the suffering and feeling like I was in suffering, I knew that I was not identifying with big eye spirit mind. And so, um, I was out, Side. That's what you, if you can do that outside and and just meditating on um, how you know the solution to how to identify with spirit so that I'm not in the suffering, feeling suffering. And if you've ever seen those tall blades of grass where there's a piece of grass and then there's another piece that grows up and it's inside. And these two, this one is tight. It's really tight. Um, was bring your energy, my mind down through that down through where those two grasses are so tight. It's like, go in down there. It's like any way in. Um, it was really, I don't recommend it, you know, but it was really cool because what I found was from that suffering and finding my way into my own spirit. Thanks, Grady. Yep. Yeah. From, from that suffering, I noticed what was I thinking about? So thinking about things, um, people that I help for free, certain people I help for free. Just the thought, just thinking about um, certain people was like, my body was like, no, you know, it was like, no, focus on yourself, focus on yourself, focus on yourself like that. So it was relaxed, calm and center, go in through that little spot, go in, de go in deep through that spot. Stop thinking about other people, just, you know. Go in deep, bore into your own soul, bore into your own existence. And then I realized how much I distract my, I allow myself to be distracted. So my little I ego mind allows my, this, you know, my, my body, my mind to be distracted, to try to help other people instead of focusing on my own healing. It was, it was cool. It was, um, you know, so I just think this is neat. So what I see is a form of vengeance and, you know, we think that we want everything perfect. We, we think we want everybody's reality to match and everybody to be on the same side. But, um, if they say, if everybody's thinking the same, then someone isn't thinking. Uh, it's a little, it's exacerbated at this point in time, January 26, 2021, totally different realities. You know, people are touching a very large elephant, very different experiences, but that doesn't change the uh, course of action for you to live your best life. Of course, in miracles, I'm not this, whatever, whatever works for you, because all this is going to be gone. We only get about a hundred years here. I see only the perishable. I see nothing that will last. What I see is not real. What I see is a form of vengeance. 
And Mary Baker Eddy healed her body. That's how she started Christian Science. She went into the hospital and she, there was a Bible in the drawer. This is a long time ago. She read the Bible. She said to herself, I wonder if this is what Jesus meant. She used her mind and she ended up healing her body, leaving the hospital and starting Christian Science. Um, oh, Eckhart Tolle, there's a, there's a, um, a magazine, I think, called Science of Mind. And that's based on Eckhart, uh, not Eckhart Tolle, sorry. Um, this, this Ernest Holmes. So he's long gone too. Um, but I really like Ernest Holmes. I really like Alan Watts. I love Thich Nhat Hanh. Uh, for writers, as far as writers. Osho. But those are my favorite, my favorite probably books. So what I see is a form of vengeance, everything. So everything's happening for me. Nothing's happening to me. It's all happening for me. And if you want to know, I feel that by April 30th of this year, April 30th, 80% of um, Americans anyway, will be in the same basic reality. So April 30th. So it's not that I'm not paying attention. It's, it's just that I'm not getting absorbed into anything. And, um, you know, I am paying some attention, but there are days I don't pay any. And it's just, you just follow. I'd rather do A Course in Miracles. And, uh, and there's so much, like, I'm so lucky because the stuff that comes to me, I'll see something and then I'll see something right after that totally contradicts it. <laughs> it's like, okay. It's like a tug of war, or pull on this side of the rope, and something pulls on that side. It's like, okay, do nothing. Do nothing. I don't know. Do nothing. So just be. Um, I truly feel like if the more you raise your vibration, the more you're the light. We create the light. The light exposes all. The higher everybody's vibration is. And it, it doesn't matter the reality that you're starting with now. So for me, you know, for me above this spectrum and for the people in the middle of that spectrum and the people on this side of the spectrum and the people on this side of the spectrum. So just to boil it down really fast, if there's four points of view roughly, me above a spectrum or someone above the spectrum, anybody who's above the spectrum, someone who's in the middle of the spectrum, someone who's on the one side of the spectrum, someone who's on the other. So if you just take four basic viewpoints of any spectrum at all, uh, if all four people from where they are, raise their vibration to minimum 400 reason. If you're at 400 reason, then everyone will be able to listen to each other, you know? And I'm not saying that staying above the spectrum is the way to go. Like to stay up there, it's just certain spectrums. There are people who make their living by empowering people on the spectrum. Like, I don't remember her name, but there was a black woman that empowers other black women. Her, that's her calling. You can feel it when she's doing it. She's in it and, and her energy, her, her, well, if you could see auras, her aura is like bright and, and, and strong. So that person's calling is to be an, be a black woman and empower black women. So she's serves her she serves her purpose best by being on a female spectrum and um, the black, you know, black versus white. And it's, it doesn't have to be a fight. It's my point. My point is this doesn't have to be a fight. If everybody's in a 400, 400, 400, 400, and then they're all touching the same elephant. This is the tusk. This is the tail. This is the ears. And this is the little belly. If these four viewpoints are touching the same elephant and they were in a 400 reason minimum, 400 reason vibration, and this person shares their experience, this person shares their experience, this person shares theirs, and this person shares theirs. Four different viewpoints of the same elephant. They all listen to each other. Um, then they can put the elephant, the whole picture together. So it's just raising vibration. This is my whole thing. It's like, 
Um, and then if they do, if they raise their vibration up to 500 love, now they can listen to each other and they love each other even better, even better. And then if 600 peace, even better, 900 gratitude, freedom, empowerment just keeps getting better. So, you know, in the lower vibrational reality and in the current paradigm, which we're leaving, but many people are still stuck there. And I realized today I'm going to make, I, I made a video, but my voice is awful. It's like, because eh, 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 I just figured, I just figured out, like I've never fit in, in the world because my mind is, works differently than so many other people. And I realized today my mind is ready for the new paradigm. And, um, that's why like, you know, whatever, that's why I don't fit in. So other people don't fit in because they, because of their body, maybe they don't feel attractive or they don't, they don't feel normal, but I've never been normal. I've just been able to hide it by keeping my mouth shut, you know, but then, you know, issues, my body's like, no, you really got to talk. So anyway, I'll be sharing my, my reality, the way my mind thinks. My mind is just ready for the new paradigm, but it's been ready for the new paradigm since I was a kid. And that's the problem, which isn't really a problem. It's just what it is. So the people that want the old paradigm, the people that are either trapped in the old paradigm or they desire the old paradigm. They want things to go back to normal. Just want things to go back to normal. Do you want things to go back to normal? It's like, there's no back. You know, you can take the track scene, but you're still going to have to wear a mask. You're still going to have to social distance. You're still not going to be able to see your grandparent. You know, what are you talking about? Like, and then I'm the crazy one. That's fine because they're not available for the new paradigm. And I'm chomping at the bit to get there. So anyway, it's all about vibration. You know, even an old paradigm person and a new paradigm person, and one of those people who's at the 200 courage vibration, they're like, whatever, I'll get on the train. If you guys go, we'll go, I'll go with you. And then the person who's like, you know, way high. So, so if you zoom out all the way, nothing matters. Nothing at all matters. If the entire galaxy just explodes into a bazillion pieces and we're all gone and no life ever exists ever again if you're way zoomed out that doesn't even matter so when you zoom way in like crazy then you're like you're you're all about this you're all about the meat suit details you're all about the so many things you get you're so attached to your identity you're so attached 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 that everything matters now including then you need special pronouns because you've zoomed in so much the ones that other people use don't quite fit and and the sexual orientations that other people have come up with those those don't fit because they zoomed in way past all that which is fine that's their you know they can do that it's probably not a person that i'm going to want to talk to for very long but you know maybe get an idea of their reality um, just for fun. Cause I like to listen to people, but here's, here's the thing. It's like, it doesn't matter which perspective where anybody is, but in the lower vibrational reality of fear and anger below 200. Okay. But in the, in the lower than 200 vibrational energies, which is exactly what the two party system was designed to do is to keep you guys all below 200 enough to consume, like buy things and get sick and then need drugs and stuff like that enough to do that, but not enough to, to just be peace and be like, man, I don't need new clothes. I don't need this or whatever. Okay. Or you keep your body healthy. You keep yourself healthy with the high vibration. So they designed it that way to keep you in the lower vibrations, to keep the lateral fight going because so these lower vibrational humans, one touching the tusk, one touching the tail, they fight. This one needs this, thinks, this one thinks they need this one to come to their reality. And this one thinks it needs this one to come to their reality. But they don't really need to, but they don't understand that. They don't realize that. So they, they just keep this fight going, which is, um, I check in with that every now and then. You can see it very easily on Twitter, or any social media. Um, so that's where we are right now. But if you just raise your vibration and not need, so there's a higher vibrational um, thing going on too, where it's like, you know, if you're raising your vibration, 
you want to pull your relatives or your spouse up to the higher vibration, well, maybe they don't want to go. So they're not holding you back, but your ego is going to tell you that they are. So my ego is going to say, I'd be much farther ahead if I, but that's just your ego writing scripts in your head. You can raise your vibration and just by being in your energy field, it's going to raise their vibration. That's not saying that they're going to hold your exact same reality. But again, I do feel that April 30th is going to bring April 30th of this year, about 80% of people will be in the same basic working reality. So I don't know what's going to happen. Um, I don't know if it's going to be something that happens in the physical world or something that happens in the spiritual world or that, or something that happens with the planets. I don't know. I hear people talk about planetary stuff and you know, when they talk about it, 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 I don't know. It's, it doesn't seem wrong. That's all I can say. And I can, I can feel, I feel my own things, my own ways. And so, so I'll have a client come in and this is what they're experiencing. I'm like, Ooh, that's the planet. I can feel like as these big planets, like it changes the energy, but I don't really understand any of that stuff. So I just feel it. So it's all just intuitive. Um, so, you know, January 26, 2021, don't wait, don't decide to wait till the end of April to like calm down, relax, calm down now, relax now, raise your vibration now, do your course in miracles you know, just for today, I'll do my work honestly. I'll do my best um, and, and enjoy now because you only have a total of about 100 years, roughly, really. I'm going to go for 120. Uh, we'll see how that goes.